Jose. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How's everything? Everything is good. Good, good. Did you get wet today? Sorry, I don't hear you. Did you get wet? No. No? Really. Okay, good. But did it rain where you were? No, there in the airport, it, it's not rain. It's not raining? No, just cloudy. Okay, where are you right now? Um, I'm taking my, my online class, my Okay, but where? But where are, are you in your house or are you in the office? In my house. All right. And where is your house again? Did you say Soyapango? Yeah. Yes. All right. I live, I live in Soyapango. Okay. And have you been there all your life? No. No. Uh, recently. I changed my residence. Uh, I used to live in Santa Tecla with my parents. Okay. Yeah. But uh, when my when my wife turns pregnant, when she decide, got pregnant, when when she got pregnant, we decide to move. So, yeah, pango. Okay, yeah, that's the best thing you can do. Once you have your own family, it's better to become independent. Yeah, yes. I mean, you have more privacy, and uh, but that's good. Yeah, I I consider that when and the way to. To live good is create your 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 own your own experience. <laughs> exactly, Freddie. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Fine. Thanks. How was your day? Well, it was a stressful day, but in the lunch. I took a power nap and then I feel better. Uh -huh. Even uh, even though it was a good day for me because all is okay. All right, good. So, how much time is your power nap? Like hmm, twenty minutes. Okay, good, good. That's good. Twenty minutes or twenty minutes. Yes. <laughs> Marcelo, how Make are you? Difference. Yeah, yeah, it makes a difference. Makes a difference. Yeah. How are you, Marcelo? Fine, teacher. With okay. a little rain, but yeah, but good. Yes. Here in San Salvador, it's been raining since two p.m. Yes, kind of. Um, do you guys remember this war? Drizzling? So no. in the afternoon, it was raining hard. Right now, it's only drizzling. Like Juvenando. Yes. Yuvisnando or Pringando, they're, they're about the same. But you know, like when it's drizzling for one or two hours, that can create problems in certain areas. Yes. All right, so let's begin. Thank you for being punctual. Today we will have a general review of all the different topics we we, we covered um, this, uh, this, this module. 
So let me go here. You see the PowerPoint? No, yet. You don't see it? Yes. You see it now? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the topic? General review. Right. So we covered different topics. Some of them were related with vocabulary. Some of them were related with grammar. And some of them were just discussing to, uh, for you to improve your fluency. Now, okay. this was one. Uh, do you remember this class when we were using compound family terms? Do you remember this yes. class? Yes. Okay. Maybe. So what if I say stepdad, stepmom, stepsister? What does that mean? Mm. What you know are uh, a direct family. Okay. Um, what do you mean exactly? Um, hermanastro, padrastro. Okay, so so when do you start using those terms? Mm, I don't remember. Okay, so imagine that um, I get divorced. Yes. And I get married again. The person that I am with she has two children. They are my stepchildren, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and I am their stepdad. So how can you explain that situation? Mm. Anybody, Freddy, Marcelo, Jose? Mm. So can you say that the connection comes after a second relationship? Yes. Okay. Yes. So if I say... Um, second or more relationship. Right, right. So For example, brother-in-law brother -in is other example. Right. Now, like if, we, if you analyze this one here, the, the first one step, you start using this prefix when you're referring to people that are that they are part of your family, but they are the result of a second relationship. Like you said at the beginning, there is no blood connection with them. Mm -hmm. So let's say this is my stepfather. That person that I call stepfather, he can disappear one day because he finishes the relationship with my mom, with my dad, whatever, and we are nothing anymore. We're completely strangers because there is no blood connection. It's true. All right. Now, what about the second one? Gad son, Gad mother. When that is the father of my of my my grandparents Are you sure father and mother okay someone Is else like padrino yes no ah okay Pad so so how padrino, can you explain madrino. that now imagine that you're explaining this word to a person that doesn't speak spanish so what what vocabulary would you use to explain the word godson or godmother? What vocabulary would you use to express this terminology? For example, when when one makes the first communion, um, 
you have to go with other person that will be your godfather or your godmother. Okay. Is when it... your father or mother died and that is that person is their your responsibility. Exactly. Yes. And in theory, that's the reason why you have a godson, a, a godfather and a godmother. If something happens to your mom or your dad, supposedly they will be responsible for you. Yes. Now, does this happen in the first communion or when you are baptized? Baptized in and confirmation. Yes. All right. And the last one, when do you use that, that one? Sister-in-law. Brother-in-law, how can you explain this term to someone else? Uh, when you have a relationship with someone, uh -huh. uh, because you get married with, with, I don't know, with someone else. Okay. Okay, someone else? Good. I, for, for husband of my sister and brother, and like say, like say in love. <laughs> right. You get married. Now, so is there any blood connection to people here? No. No. Uh -uh. Because if 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 let's say you get divorced for whatever reason, your sister-in-law, she's not your sister-in-law anymore. And the same with the brother-in-law, father-in-law, and all that. So this is the terminology that you use when you get married to a person and then this person has family. So his family or her family, they become part of your circle too. But once again, there is no blood connection. All right, so this is a prefix and this is? Suffix. Good, very good. Um, any questions about the vocabulary part? No. No. No? Okay, so what is the term that you use to refer to the son of your brother? Who is he? The son of my brother? My nice. Niece. No. No. Niece, nephew, niece. My, nephew. My nephew. 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 What about the daughter of your sister? My uh, it's my niece. 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 Very niece. good. What niece. about the husband of your daughter? Uncle? Uh, the, the, son in law. The husband of your daughter. Son in law. The son, in -law. Son, in -law. son in law. Okay. What about your husband's dad? Father-in-law. My father-in-law. Father-in-law. Okay. What about the father of your father? Grandfather. Grandfather. Uh -huh. And what about the grandfather of your father? Great-grandfather. Great yes, great-grandfather. Very good. Now, let's go to the next one. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Is there a word to name... Uh, the the father-in-law of your son the father-in-law of your son no not that i know i think that question is very similar i, I, I don't know if you guys heard the word concuño yeah, like that. And consuegro too. Compadre. That's the word in Spanish, right? Right, concuño, consuegro, compadre. Those terms, really, people don't use them in English. Mm, okay. Yep. Okay, any other questions related with the compound family terms? Mm -mm. No? no? All right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we were also talking about the present perfect. Uh, how many tenses do we have in English? 12. 12. 12. Okay, so we have 12 tenses. Every tense has a different function. Every tense has a different structure. 
So in this first month, we had the chance to use the present perfect. What's the function of the present perfect? Anybody? It's used to convey, convey action that, that, that actually finish. Okay, so you're saying that this action is finished? But has the possibility to continue. Very good. So you use the present perfect under two circumstances. Maybe when you're speaking, you're still doing the action. Maybe when you're speaking, you're not doing the action, but like Jose says, it can happen again. So that's the present perfect. So, so what would be like the best description to describe the present perfect? Unfinished actions. Activity. Yes, unfinished activities, unfinished actions, yes. Now, what is the auxiliary we use? Have. 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 Is it only have? Have. 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 All right, so we use have and we use has. Um, <coughs> what is the form of the verb? Subject. Is it present? Uh, the form Inverting. of the verb. The form of the past, verb. Past participle. Past participle. Yes, mm -hmm. past participle. Now remember this. Uh, present perfect is just one scenario of when you use the past participles. Past participles are used all the time and with different tenses and different structures. Yeah. Okay. And present perfect, something very important. It's like whether this, the, the information is positive, negative, or question, the form of the verb is always the same. So we got positive, negative, question form. Uh -huh. You use the same verb. You use the same verb. Now, if you're using the third person singular, you need to say has. But once again, positive, negative, or question, uh, the form of the verb will always be past participle. Do you have any questions here? <laughs> When use the present perfect, which I, I don't listen in. Uh, do you see the last the last bullet? Do you see the last bullet? Yes. Okay. So you use the present perfect for unfinished activities. Uh, you use the present perfect under two scenarios. When you are doing the action when you're talking, or maybe you're not doing the action when you're talking. However, you can do the action in the future again. So it doesn't matter okay. which scenario you're using, the action will always be unfinished. Okay, thank you. All right, good. Um, Someone tells you, uh, you haven't eaten yet, have you? And then you want to answer and say, si he comido. How do you say si he comido in English? Yes, I've eaten. I have eaten. But how do you make that emphasis of saying si he comido? Yes, I have eaten. Uh, okay, when you say, yes, I have eaten, you say, si he comido. But my, my question is, si he comido. How do you make emphasis on that si uh, word? Yes, I have eaten. Really? Yes. Very good. So the only thing you need to do, you put special intonation with the auxiliary. So imagine that I'm eating 
And my sister tells me, uh, you haven't eaten dinner yet, have you? And I said, I have eaten, but I'm still a little bit hungry. So once again, if you want to be very specific and you want to emphasize, you would have to make special intonation to the auxiliary have or has. And what about already? What about what? Already. Already? I have, already? I have already eaten, no? Yes, you can say that too. You can say that too. But now, but there are times when you want to make emphasis on a particular part of the sentence. And that's when you say, I have eaten already. So you say have. Okay. All right. Uh, and do you guys remember the differences between yet and already? People? Okay, can someone explain? Yet is, oh, sorry. Yet is for negative and already is for positive. Uh huh. Okay, good. And what about just? Just. When you, when, uh, like uh -huh. recent, it's like recent. It's, uh, recently. Yes. You will use just to express recent activities. But finished, right, teacher? Yes, exactly. Okay. Something that is finished and that happened recently. Okay. So how do you say acabo de llegar? I just, I just came to arrive. I just arrived. Yes. I just arrived. I have just arrived. Yes. Now, what is the contraction of I have or you have? I have just arrived. Yes. I just Now, remember this. I have just arrived. I have just arrived. Yes. Now, something very important. Don't get confused with have. Remember that have has double function. Do you remember the double function? Yeah. What is the double Tener. function? Yeah, ver. Okay, so, so what's the name of that one? La refri. Okay, so, so, so what are the two functions of have? The positive function and... I don't know. <laughs> okay, like if I said, okay, I have a like car. An auxiliary. Or, or like an, like an auxiliary I have a, and like uh -huh. a verb. Action, like, like an action verb, like an auxiliary verb. Right, very good. So you says, I have a car. What is have in this case? A verb. verb. Action verb. A verb that indicates... Possession. 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 Very good. Now, you see the second sentence. I said, oh, I've seen you before. I've seen you before. I've seen you before. Does that express uh, possession? No. 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 no, it doesn't. What does that express? I've seen you before. Actions. Actions that happen. Okay, now remember this. You use have, like, like in the first sentence, as a verb and you express possession. You also use have as an auxiliary. So, oh you, have, so you have double function. Something that happened in the past, I have seen you before. Right, but this is my point. Sometimes we get confused with when to use have. So if you want to express possession, you will say, I have a car. But then again, have can also be used in a different form. What is the or other even, form? Even, even. When you say have as an auxiliary. Which auxiliary to make a sentence complete in the present perfect? Yes. And for example, when you use have as a 
not has a verb in the other way, just on that way you can use the contraction, right? Exactly, and, and that's what that was. That's what I was going to say. You can use it. The, you can use the contraction form only if you're using it as an auxiliary. Oh, yeah. ah, okay. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So look here. You see the first example? Yes. No. That's, no. that's not good. That's not good. Because you, you can use the contraction form only if you're using it as an auxiliary, not as a verb. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you go like that, and I've seen you before. Now, if you're using it as an auxiliary, then you can use the contraction form, and it's okay. Thank you. All right. Thank now, you. and what is the contraction of has? Um, yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, uh yes. -huh. Yes. Okay. So she's been very helpful. She's been very helpful. So as you can see, apostrophe S is exactly the same contraction that we use when you're saying she is. Yes. Right? But, but the rest of the sentence will tell you if it's present continuous or if it's uh, present perfect. All right, any questions here? No. Okay, so do you guys remember the topic of why we were using the present perfect? Do you remember we were discussing the question, how have you changed? Yeah. How have you changed? Physically speaking, how have you changed? I have gained five pounds. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? How have you changed physically speaking? Um, I, I have turned to gray hair. Okay. Good. Yeah, it happens. So it mm -hmm. says, I have had a different color of hair. I have gained weight. Uh, in some cases, you have lost weight and different mm -hmm. things. All right, any questions about the present perfect? No. No? All right, let's go here. You see it? Yes. Okay, so I'm going yes. to I'm going to make groups just for you yes. to have a, a reminder. Some of these models they have only one function, some of them have double function. It doesn't matter if it's single function or double function, you guys have to be very familiar with this. So I'm going to make groups and you guys uh, do the discussion. Here we go. Evelyn and Marcelo. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay, so okay. start the talking. Okay. Jose, Marcelo. Okay, okay. Evelyn. Who's going to break the ice? <laughs> no one. No one, huh? No one. <laughs> Maybe we should say ladies first. No. <laughs> uh, yes, the ladies first. <laughs> so, Evelyn, what can you say about May? May is is a model in is a little bit confused 
because uh, I use may like um, uh, a polite way to to ask for something. Yes, very good. That is one function. Uses, what is the other function? It is uses to to get permission of of someone to do something. Right, right. That's that's what uh, Evelyn says. Like, okay, like sometimes you ask them to sound polite. Good, very good. So, what would be the second function? To say possibilities. No. Very good, very good. And that's exactly what it is. So you use may under two circumstances: to be polite, to ask for something, to ask for permission, or when you want to express a possibility. Okay. Good. Marcelo, what about might? Might, might. Uh, a possibility too. Uh huh. Is that but, the only function? Uh, that I remember. <laughs> yes. I don't remember the, the other uh, function. Yeah, no, it, that's the only function that it has. Might has only one function. And it expresses possibility. Ah, okay. Yep. Okay, let me visit your <laughs> friends. I'll be back. Okay, thank you. You already have the certificate. Mm -hmm. and, yes. And she says, maybe you don't pass. Yes. <laughs> yes. My coworker told me the same. Yeah. She, she said that I need $45. How much percent <laughs> did you have in the platform? Uh, uh, 80, 87, but I yeah, wrote to, 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 I don't know with, with whom, but I was uh, chatting with someone who told me that, that I need to try to get nine, 90 points. Really? Nine, really? Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. He, he said that maybe if i get that kind that, that points i will see the bottom but i tried but nothing appears really mm -hmm. i have 87 and i saw the bottom i click the bottom and it says like i will find uh, some some time mm -hmm. it will appear the yeah me the too I think uh, it will be appear. It will appear after the after we finish, Sunday. maybe right? Yes, next Sunday I think it will appear. I hope. Teacher, I hope. are you going? Are you going to be our teacher for the next for the next level? I think so. They haven't told me anything. Okay. Okay. Yes. So don't worry about the platform. I don't think because. Uh, like you three, your your attendance has been very uh, good, and not only that you have been connected with the with the sessions, but also you know you participate a lot. So that that's really good. You have to uh, give points for the participation. I should. <laughs> uh, so yes, I think please, because we have only eighty seven percent of the platform. Yes. Say, Francisco, Maybe. give us the three points. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, please. 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 Maybe that's why, because we don't can get the certificate yet. Okay, let me think about it. Now I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't. I don't have access to the platform. I don't have access to the grades. Really. But, but I. But I know. But I know that. Uh, um, you guys will get the uh, the grade they're asking for. I know that for sure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's wait. Yes. Okay. I'll be back. Let me go see your other friends. Okay. Okay, teacher. Bye. So let's stop. For example, for example, shawl. S H A L L. That is other. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember that was for for things suggest for suggestions or something like that. But 
has uh, questions, I remember. Teacher. Uh huh. Charlie, the future. How do you like shoot? True? Uh, no. Or is like a uh, possibility too? Not like the other really. model? Uh, you use should to give advice, to give suggestions, yeah. to give recommendations. Recommendation. Yeah. If you want to use show, it's not a no. recommendation, it's not a suggestion. You use show to express something in the future that is mandatory. Yeah, teacher, but um, how to? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, all to. Yeah, it's like uh, like giving recommendation, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, where to say, sure. Yes, so you said, look, uh, I have a small headache. You said, well, you ought to see a doctor. That means, uh, you should see a doctor, but it's not exactly recommendation what you're telling the person what to do. But it's not a command either. It's not a command. It's yeah. less than sure. But actually, it's a little bit stronger than should. Oh. It's near than must. Okay, let's say it's between should and must. Yeah, truly is a recommendation and most is an obligation right. or an assumption. Uh huh. Uh huh. So you can say that all two is like between. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And uh, shall is the future, but there are not different between will and shall. Yes. There is a difference that you use will for... Shall we dance? Shall we dance, Freddy? Okay. <laughs> Freddy, you yeah. want to dance with Maribel? <laughs> Freddy, yeah, do, you, do you dance? Yeah. Yes, I dance. Okay. Douglas, do you dance? And I want to dance yes, with Maribel. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Maribel, do you dance? Uh, a little bit. A Sometimes. Little bit. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. so, Chal, I remember teacher that the, the teacher said, shall we, es, es como una pregunta, so only a yeah, question, I don't remember, shall we dance? I okay. remember that sentence. Okay. Yes. Uh, now, remember this. Uh, when you use show, it's because you're saying something in the future that is mandatory. But also, like Maribel is saying, it's the one that you use to invite someone to do something. So you go to a dance, you say, uh -huh. uh, shall we dance? Teacher. Yes, Douglas. But that's in a really polite way, right? Yes, yes it is. Yes it is. Because usually, if you go to a party with a friend, you say, you want to dance? And that's it. Yeah. And like Douglas is saying, if you want to be like, you want to sound polite, and you want to impress the other person, you say, shall. Mm -hmm. Shall we dance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So which one are you discussing right now? That you finish all of them? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And we Do don't you... have an adult. <laughs> okay. W what are the two functions of would? In for hypothetical. Uh huh. And? Activities in the past. Very good. What about must? Obligation, Obligation. or assumption. Very good. What about could? Mm. Is it is possibility, possibility, but in the past. And? Is the path of can. Very good. What about should? Advice. Advice. My recommendation. Uh-huh. Oh. Yes, but uh, sometimes like I regret too. Regret. Uh, it, it depends. If you're using it in a very general way, it's only for suggestions. Now, in the next uh, slide, we will see how we use them, uh, 
uh, for regrets, like Maribel is saying. Déjamelo, déjamelo yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go see your friends. I'll be back. I'll be seeing you really soon in the in the main session. I'll be back. Okay. It can be or it can't, right? Like mm, it might, might be. Podría. It might be. Like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. So which mm. one are you discussing? Uh, uh, might. 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 What's yes, the function uh, of might? Possibility. Is possibility. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it one function or double function? One function. Good. What about should? Should. Um, is for suggest uh, an advice. Okay, to give advice, to give suggestions, opinions, recommendations. Okay, what about could? Single function or double function? Uh, single function, I think. Single function. You sure? Yeah. Yes. Cool. I think it's double. Express possibility. The, mm. word, the word itself is double function, I think. Yes. Double. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're right, Nidia. It, it is double function. What is the other function, Nidia? As a verb in verb. past tense. Mm -hmm. Okay, and mm -hmm. it's the past tense of can. Good. Can. Oh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's got double function, like you said, it's a possibility, but at the same time, you can use it as the past tense of can. Okay. Okay. Okay, what about must? Single or double? Must. Yeah, I have problems with must. Okay. It's an obligation. Okay, yeah. so that's one, and the mm -hmm. other one? A conclusion, like you you have a conclusion of something, you... That is correct, that is correct. So like Teresa says, the first one, it's uh, something mandatory, obligation. an obligation, mandatory. right? And then the other one is when you are very sure about something and you give your opinion. Yes. But it doesn't mean that your opinion is true. Yes. Hmm. Right? So, for okay. example, you say, I saw my best friend after five years. And then you say, oh, so you must be happy. That is mm -hmm. your opinion. You're very sure. But maybe your friend tells you, you know what? Not really. You know, mm. uh, we had a big argument and now we don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you say you must be happy, you are very sure, but it doesn't mean that it's true. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. something mandatory and when you make your assumptions. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. And what about the last one? Would. Uh-huh. Is hypothetical. Okay. A and hypothetical what's the other situation. one? Very good. It's a hypothetical situation. Hypothetical situation. And what is and, the other one? Uh, it's um, when something could happen, but but it's not okay. sure. Okay. Now, when you say hypothetical, that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. Something might yeah. happen. Might mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. But what is the other one? The past tense of will? Okay. Um, in a way, it is. Uh, remember that we use would for past events. Okay. It has the same function as used to. Mm. When I was a you kid. Say, yes? Uh, teacher, uh, uh, talking about used to. Today uh -huh. I saw I saw um, uh, something in internet in uh -huh. Facebook yep. and it it was a kind of blackboard and it has do you know the difference between I use to and I use to uh -huh. said, uh, I I guess a little confused 
Okay, can someone explain that to Teresa? What are the differences between I used to and I am used to? Yeah, yeah, that, that. I, I used to and I am used to. I, uh, I used to is something that happened before. Okay. And you don't do it anymore, right? Exactly. Yes. yes. And mm. I am used to? It's like something that, that you're that you're doing it constantly, like uh, I don't remember the word. Good, very good. It's it, like uh, Karen is saying, when you include verb to be, it's because you're expressing something that you're constantly doing it. Yeah, like an ha like a habit. Yes, it's like a habit. Yes, like a habit. For example, so that's the for word. example, for example, I used to go to the park. When I was studying, okay, and I am used to to get a to take a shower after I go to bed. Okay, Could yes, be? before you go to bed. Before. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, okay. that's exactly what it is. Okay. All right, good. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's return to the main session. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions about the functions of the models? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, it's clear. Okay, so let's, where was this? It's right here. Okay, one more thing. Okay, um, you see the, you see the slide? Yes. Yeah. All right. If you analyze in every sentence, I'm using a different model. I am using the same verb and in every sentence, the message is completely different. So what I'm saying is this, the main function of models is to give an, a specific meaning to the main verb. Those are models. Remember that when we use models, the form of the verb is always base form. Base form, mm -hmm. Yes. And when you say base form, that's not negotiable. That means that you will always oh, use the yeah, base yeah. form of the verb. Yeah. You can never put ing, you can never put ed, you can never put s, es, you can never do anything to the verb. It always has to be base form. Are we okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. And what's the meaning of rehearse? I don't know. When you practice Inside. something? Yes. Rehearse, you can say that it's a synonym of practice. For example, for dance, if you want to, if you have to practice for dance, this is the word. Exactly. Or let's say next week, you have a presentation in your school about Romeo and Juliet. You have to rehearse first. Oh, yeah. Do you share? Yes. Could you pronounce okay. that word? Because I don't rehearse. Know. Rehearse. 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 How do you say banda de guerra or well, banda de paz in English? Do you remember the saying banda de paz? No. You say. <laughs> Um, <laughs> band. <laughs> yes, it's a band, and you call it marching band. Because that's exactly what you do. You march, right? So, did you see the marching bands on September fifteenth? No, you didn't. No. Okay, but. If you know, 
before they go to September 15, they have to rehearse every day for five, six, seven weeks. Yes. So that's rehearse. All right. So are we okay with this uh, slide? Yes. 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 Okay. Now, in, when we were studying this, um, we were also using past models. And I said that before you start using past models, you need to have a very clear idea of how they function in a general way. So when do we use past models? I should have listened to my mom. We could have died. She must have gotten lost. The three examples, the action is history. There is nothing you can do to change, but you still give your opinion. I should have listened to my mom. What is the message? Did I listen to my mom? No. No. Okay. 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 We could have died. Did we die? No. 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 And then you say, she must have gotten lost. Do you remember the function of must? Yes. yes. What is one? This is in the case you supposed something about the, about right. the situation. So we were saying must is an assumption. So she must have gotten lost. You're waiting for your sister and your sister is already late. But your sister confirmed that she was going to your house. So you start making your own assumptions and then you say, I know she must have gotten lost. She must have gotten lost. How do you say that one in Spanish? She must have gotten lost. Debió haberse perdido. Debió haberse perdido. So you're 100% sure that she's lost because your sister never called you back to say, look, uh, I stopped the supermarket or something. So you always use a uh, model plus have plus the past participle of the verb. And you always need to use contractions. Why do you always need to use contractions, class? Because, because, because that's the, the way that they talk, the, the American people talk. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Now, when you speak, contractions are optional. But other people, they don't see it that way. They say, no, contractions are not optional. Contractions is part of the way that I speak. So they don't see it as something optional. And then when they start using contractions, then that's when we start having problems to understand because we never use contraction. So what is the contraction of should have? Should have. Should have. Should have. Should have. Should have. What about could have? Could have. Could have. Could have. Must have. Could have. Must 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 have and would have would have would have would have, would have. Would have. very good would have. so actually pronunciation is very easy you say should have could have might have must have would have and all you need to pronounce is letter v at the end v yeah right um any questions about this uh slide past models no. 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 And the last topic, do you remember when we were talking about a city? Yes, city. Okay, so what makes a city? Landmarks, Landmarks. nightlife. Landmarks, a monument. Nightlife, commuting. Commuting and safety. Okay, what's the meaning of a landmark? Museum. Monuments. 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 
Um, what is the monument on Constitution Boulevard? The Chulona. The Chulona. Right. <laughs> and, La pervertida. No. Okay. <laughs> the naked woman. Okay. Que los pervierte. The okay. naked woman. <laughs> A ustedes. So, do, do you think La Chulona is a landmark? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, it is. Now, where is her husband? Um, um, in Comalapa uh, Highway. Oh. You sure? In Teatro Presidente. Exactly. Uh -huh. What's the name? Uh, El Chulón. El Chulón, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> La Chulón, El Chulón. Can you mention other landmarks in San Salvador? Salvador del Salvador. Mundo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What else? Hermano Lejano, no. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Torre Cuscatlán. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Why, why was Torre Cuscatlán considered as a landmark? Landmark. Why, one time it was the tallest building in San Salvador. Exactly. Because there was a time that Torre Cuscatlán was the highest, highest. building okay. in San Salvador. That is correct. Okay. Uh, nightlife? Is, uh, in Santa Tecla? I don't remember. Sure. Sure. What part of Santa Tecla? Carmen. Okay. Other places? El Tunco Beach. El Tunco is nice. Zona, Zona Rosa. Rosa. Yep, yep, yep. Very good. What about commuting? I don't do know you, what it is. Do you think commuting is part of a city? I don't know. I what don't it remember is. the meaning of that word. Okay. So if I say, how do you commute? How do you commute? Ask me that question. How do you, how do you commute? commute, teacher? Usually by motorcycle. Uh -huh. Sometimes oh. by car, sometimes in transportation. transportation. Right. Mm. So commuting. So do you think commuting is part of a city? Yes. 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 Sure. Because yes. if I want to go to Lourdes, I want to make sure that I know when I can catch the last uh, bus. So mm -hmm. commuting is part of a city. Yeah. Right? And the last one, safety. Security. Yes. Uh-huh. Do you live in a safe city? Yes, of yeah. course. Of yes. <laughs> yeah, we the have big the time. Really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. So maybe one day, you know, like we are able to say, you know what, I live in a safe neighborhood and, you know, mm -hmm. we have a better quality of life. And we can, we, we can get there. We can do it. Maybe one day. Sure. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you here today. It's been a pleasure working with you guys all these past four weeks. Do you have any questions? Are you going to be uh, our next teacher? Uh, yeah. I think so. I hope so. I hope so too. Teacher. Yes. <laughs> okay. I hope so. Okay. Okay, so mm -hmm. once again, thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Thank Have you, a teacher. nice uh, night. Get sleep. And if things go well, I'll be seeing you on Monday, same place, same time. On 14th. The 14th? Yes. Okay, good. So the 14th. All right. Okay. So thank okay. you very much. Take care. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.
<laughs> I hope so too. Bye. See ya.